I'm Professor Pascal Amel, MD, PhD, working in Paris, France, uh, with a large interest in the field of pancreatic cancer for more than 20 years. And uh, it's the reason why I, I'm happy to speak of uh, uh, Eris Paz today. The whole interest of uh, Eris Paz is to address a particular way of uh, tumor grow, which is metabolism. And this is very original for us. And uh, we know that asparaginase is able to stop some metabolic pathways in the self of pancreatic tumor, as well as other tumors. And uh, pancreatic cancer cells are very dependent of these metabolic pathways. This firstly has been shown uh, with cell lines and uh, xenograph models. And due to the uh, promising results, it was then tested in human. And then um, the hypothesis was that uh, pancreatic cancer cells could be more sensitive to the drug when they already had a low expression on, of asparagine synthase, the way to to produce asparagine and in these uh, cells which are more or less depleted in this enzyme uh, we hypothesized that uh, asparaginase uh, eriaspas could be very efficient after we have shown that there were significant reduction in uh, risk of uh, death about 40 percent and risk of tumor progression the same figure of 44 persons that was in a phase two study prospective but phase two study the next step was trying to prove in a larger population in a phase three design that this drug could be helpful in patients who had progressed on the first line of treatment after this promising result of the phase two study we designed the phase three study Tribeca 1, which is a pragmatic study. As the investigator, I are free to design of the first line, mainly in France, Folferinox, mainly in other countries, Gemabraxan. And in patients with progressive disease uh, under this line, but who remain in good condition, PS0 or 1, they uh, can enter the study and receive the other backbone chemotherapy. So we decided to embark after designing a phase three study that was a pragmatic one. Investigators are uh, able to choose the first line and then the second line backbone chemotherapy is adapt to the first line. For example, in France, we use Folfir and Oxa first line and second line in the Tribeca study, backbone chemotherapy is Gemabraxan and in other countries uh, in which uh, Gemabraxan is used as first line, Folfiri with Erinotecan or Onivide is used as second line backbone chemotherapy. And in these uh, groups, half of patients receive, uh, in addition, Eriaspas. I think the future of pancreatic cancer uh, rely on the uh, tailored therapy regarding some genetic or biologic difference between the tumors. An example uh, very uh, dramatic uh, new about uh, Taylor therapy is the use of Olaparib in those patients who have a germline mutation in BRAC1 or BRAC2 gene. Uh, it has been shown that they are very sensitive to Olaparib as maintenance treatment. It's important to say that in this uh, targeted therapy, it's likely that uh, inve investigator and future study will use a first efficient line. I plan that in the next future studies, uh, before proposing a maintenance therapy, like that with Olaparib or other immunotherapy, for example, uh, people will, will continue to use an efficient first line chemotherapy to control the disease and then to be able to propose a maintenance therapy. 
So this is a different situation compared to uh, use of eriaspase. Eriaspase is used in case of progression and when investigators consider that the first-line therapy can no more be efficient. In maintenance therapy, you stop, for example, for furanox, start with the maintenance therapy adapted to uh, gene uh, mutation in the tumor or biological uh, feature of the tumor, but is not in case of progression, but only in case of tumor control, which is pretty different because trying to have these maintenance therapies, uh, the aim is to increase duration of tumor control, but also to allow to patients to have a period of rest uh, with less toxic treatment. And I think for this point of view, Olaparib in Polo study is very interesting because you can imagine that Olaparib is much, much less toxic than Polfirinox. Uh, the choice of neoadjuvant or adjuvant uh, treatment is not so easy. I think first I can answer that uh, adjuvant treatment would be in both cases. Patients who receive uh, first, uh, who had first uh, surgery, surgical resection, will receive uh, adjuvant treatment. This is uh, an evidence-based medicine now with six months or Folfenrox if they are fit or Gemabraxan or Gem plus Capistabine if they are more frail. For neoadjuvant treatment, it's another question. The neoadjuvant treatment presents some advantages. First, it allows to decrease the size of tumor, to decrease the percentage of uh, invaded margins to uh, try to avoid R1 resection. But another advantage, which is very important to the eyes of doctors, and which should be very co cautiously explained to the patient that during this period of neoadjuvant treatment, we have four to six months of tumor observation. And if the patient have a particular uh, aggressive tumor, we probably will observe metastasis or tumor grow locally during this neoadjuvant treatment. I think this neoadjuvant treatment with, will be more and more used in patients with borderline tumor. But in fact, this is no more a true neoadjuvant treatment. This is an induction treatment. Same for locally advanced tumor. And in patients with truly resectable tumor, which is more rare when you exclude borderline treatment, um, I think you will use true neoadjuvant treatment, but only in a trial, uh, research trial setting. Because you understand that if somebody have a chemotherapy incidence, several incidents during neoadjuvant chemotherapy uh, while he had a resectable tumor, it's a big problem for him and family. And he could say, wow, you could operate the, the tumor. You have pretty efficient adjuvant chemotherapy and you propose me a neoadjuvant treatment that had uh, severe adverse events. So we have to be very careful and again, not go out from prospective trial for the moment in patients with truly resectable disease. If you want my uh, very true feeling, I think area spas could be used at any stage of pancreatic cancer. If I compare to uh, supportive care, nutrition, psychology, support, physical activity, pain control, these four aspects of support control should be used during the whole history of pancreatic cancer and not only in the very last weeks of palliative uh, treatment. I think the pancreatic tumor is dependent of very special metabolic pathway and probably during the whole history of the tumor grow, more or less at certain periods. But for me, areaspas and, and what could trouble the metabolism of the tumor could be used at any uh, uh, time of the tumor progression. Now, 
whether it could be used uh, uh, on first line and whether a large uh, prospective trial could be designed for uh, that question is another thing. And uh, maybe it's a difficult question because, for example, to uh, have a clear advantage on Folfirinox with a new drug added to Folfirinox, probably you have to include a lot of patients. And for example, to, to compare Folfirinox with Folfirinox plus Eriaspaz on first line, probably with a hypothesis, uh, you have to design, you need a large number of patients. So I think we have to, to, to think about that. It's a very good question. And at the other side of the spectrum, I think in the last lines or even before complete palliative support, I think maybe because it's a very uh, acceptable treatment with low toxicity, area spas could be used in patients with late progressive disease, but who remain in good condition, trying to control as much as possible the tumor growth. I think we live now in a very exciting area because after the uh, uh, availability of gemcitabine in uh, 1997, we, have a, we had a long period of more 15 years without new schema of chemotherapy uh, what uh, was efficient until Folfirinox. And the problem with Folfirinox is that it is a pretty toxic uh, schema and it's difficult to add new drugs to Folfirinox. But nevertheless, by tailoring the tumor uh, characteristic, by tailoring the patient for the treatment, I think we will make a lot, lot of progress, but by little subgroup of patients, BRAC1, BRAC2, maybe uh, aspargine synthase, so and so. And with all this uh, tailoring uh, trial, we will progress in, in this uh, terrific disease.